Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay, this is Biscuit, and welcome to Inside the Hem, where we dive into all things sewing with style and budget in mind. This month I'm bringing you 30 days of festive fashion sewing, where each day I'm sharing a new garment sewing idea to inspire your holiday wardrobe. No matter your personal style, join me as we add a touch of handmade magic to this season's celebrations. Let's dive into today's project, which is a really fun and festive kimono. Okay, this one is for kind of the ultimate lazy girl, no judgment. You can put literally zero thought into your outfit and throw this on top of it all and suddenly, like magically, you're ready to party. <laughs> it's easy to wear and even easier to sew, especially with the little trick that I have up my sleeve. You can sew this up in a couple of hours for sure. So even if your party is close, like maybe tonight, um, grab some festive fabric and make one of these right away. When I was looking for ready to wear inspiration, there was a lot of like festival kimonos that were sparkly, but not exactly what I was looking for for a holiday kimono. Many of them uh, were made from a lot of the fabrics that we've already gone over in this series, like burnout velvet and mesh and sheer chiffon. Anything that was like light and airy was ultimately dubbed a, um, festival kimono. So I wanted to go in a different direction. And when I finally settled on an inspiration, I fell in love with what I came up with. So let's take a look. Okay, so for ready to wear inspiration, I kept seeing these sequin kimonos. And I thought that they looked really chic and elegant considering they're so sparkly. And recently sequin has become something that you wear in the daytime. It's become something that um, isn't just reserved for special occasions. So I think this would be a great little topper for a basic, basic outfit that you have in your closet already. You need to jazz it up similar to the capelet, but you don't want to go like furry or you want something that is going to be warmer than that little capelet was that I featured. This is going to be it. Um, so that was it in like a champagne color, but I kind of really like the black. I think you could dress this up over like a simple velvet dress. You could do, um, like leather leggings and a black t-shirt, black jeans and a black t-shirt. Um, I think you could do, you know, lots of colors of dresses and under, you know, whatever clothing underneath it. Um, and this would just elevate it, um, all that much more. Plus, as you know, it takes zero time to sew. So you can see this one has no center back seam. We've got a drop shoulder um, that you can see here and then kind of like a wide bell sleeve and that's it. Now this one is lined. Um, it says so here, fully lined. I found a way around that, I think, because lining it will take a long time. There were some other versions I found that were bias binding finished. Is that how you say that? bias bound <laughs> like this one almost has like a robe quality to it I didn't really love that and this one has something happening in the on the raw edges I just couldn't tell really what it was um this one also for what it's worth has rib knit cuffs and a neckline a back neckline which I thought was kind of fun and unique um to kind of do the casual but dressy thing Anyways, going back to the inspiration, I just, nobody wants to mess with the lining. We just want to be able to sew this up really quickly. So I want to have one, two side seams, two underarm seams, and call it done, right? Uh, well, attach the sleeves as well. So two, four, six seams. That's all I want. So for the pattern, I found new look um, six, three, seven, eight. And upon first glance, you're probably like, that could work and it, it can and it will we do have to make a couple of alterations though so it comes in sleeveless it comes in set in sleeve and it comes in drop shoulder so those three which i think is a great value because this is the hardest thing to change about a pattern so if you want to have all three of these options for any open front type of cardigan that you can dream of not just a kimono um this would be a good option. It also has an option for fringe. So I did find this one that my 70s heart fell in love with. Um, the fringe is only sewn under the arm. It's only sewn right here and nowhere else. 
So that's also an affordable way because fringe can be kind of expensive, but you can see here really well how it's only sewn into the underarm seam and nothing else. So I thought that was really fun. If you're doing something that's like, like a little more casual, I think this could really work. I also love this kind of bronzy color. Um, but anyways, both of those have the drop shoulder version, but not curved hemlines. So you're just going to bring this down and you're going to make a 90 degree angle here for the actual um, inspiration. This one, you're just going to use version C again with a drop shoulder and you're going to bring this down to the length of A, whatever the length of A is. Is she wearing A? No, she's wearing B. Are A and B the same? No, but they're close. Yeah, they're close. So it's going to be just about at your ankle. You could go a little bit shorter if you wanted. I think hers ends mid shin, like right below her calf. So yeah, pretty close to A. All right. And then my little secret trick for getting around having to line this thing, you can see on this version here that it is unlined because this is a raw edge, and then they've just used bias binding to go around all of the edges, um, the visible edges. This gets hemmed. It looks like a one-inch hem down here, and then this is a baby hem, but you could definitely get away with doing a regular hem if you straighten this out and make it a 90-degree angle like we talked about. Um, real quick, all the sizes are in one envelope, extra small to extra large. That gets you to a bust of 46. Not the best, but again, it is kind of simple to sew. And so you could add, you know, you could, you could grade this out on your own if you needed to go up a few more inches. It's, it's a simple design. So I think even like the basic, basic, like just quick and dirty, um, grading would work. There's also a million kimonos, uh, patterns that are available out there. So go find another one. Just make sure it has a drop shoulder and you're good to go. Uh, fabric wise for B, we're looking at two, three yards at most, depending on your size, but at most three yards. So also very affordable. This one also has a center back seam. As I showed you here, you can, you don't need that. You can definitely sew that on the fold. There's really, it's just going to take more fabric. I'm sure that's why they did it. Um, so if you're wanting to save fabric, you can. If you want to cut it on the fold, you can do that too. All right, so here's my trick for getting around it. I found from Joanne sequin on velvet fabric. And there's a couple of colors. We have this pretty red one. We have this kind of yellowy gold one. It, it's not my favorite color of gold. And then we also have the black one. Okay, this one is Badgley Mishka, so it ends up being a little bit more expensive, but you can get an idea of the sequin here. Isn't that really pretty? I think it looks really exceptional. And then it's super hard to see like how the sequins are sewn onto the velvet, especially in the black, but the gold one had some really pretty pictures where you could kind of see it a little bit more. All right, so we've got this. Can you see, and there we go. Can you see the velvet peeking out? If the sequins are literally sewn onto velvet. Normally they're sewn onto like maybe like a mesh or something. So I imagine the back side of this is gonna be that kind of smooth type of whatever it is that the back side of velvet is. Um, and that's how I think we can get around lining it because the underside of velvet is usually pretty comfortable. Um, here is another picture where you can see the velvet really well. Maybe. Nope. Okay, we can zoom in, but you can see the velvet in there. But from far away, um, like the black one you saw, it looks not like velvet. It looks like fully sequined. Um, I didn't get any photos. Even the red one doesn't have any photos of the back side of it. Um, but I have some in my local store, so I could go pick this up like today and then sew it up tomorrow and be ready for my party this weekend. Um, so it says elevate your wardrobe, black sequin velvet fabric, touch of glamour, dress or skirt. Okay. It's 45 inches wide. Dang. She's trying to take all of our money because we need how much for 45, 45. Oh, two and three quarters. Oh wait, B 
three and a quarter. So 20, 40, 60 dollars. Where'd it go? No, 30, 60, 90, but 30 dollars not on sale. Oh, but it's name brand. I bet you can't use a coupon. I bet Badgley Mishka is excluded from the coupon. All right. Well, maybe it says you can use this. I think y'all want to try it. Let's buy three yards. Let's apply. Let's go to cart and see if they give us that discount. They did. So, I mean, 80 bucks, 80 bucks. That's not, that's not terrible. You guys, I, this feels like a classic item to me that you would wear over and over again. Uh, you'll just be the girl with the sequin kimono <laughs> that you wear to every single party. I don't know. Um, it doesn't feel that bad, especially whenever you know that you're going to save time. Because for me, time is money also. So when I know I can sew that one up super quick instead of having to buy the cheaper sequin fabric and aligning and spend more time on it, that's my girl slash sewing math at work. So. Thanks for joining me for today's festive project. I hope recreating this kimono sparks some inspiration for your holiday sewing. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on tomorrow's project where we will be recreating a draped, <laughs> a draped front top that you are going to love. I can't wait to see you back here for more 30 days of festive fashion sewing. See you all very soon. Bye.